right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Tonight, an extreme case of road rage in Chesterfield. The minor accident police said led to a brutal beating. One rain chance in the next week, and it happens in the next 14 to 22 hours. The change is arriving after that, just in time for the weekend. Our top story, we're just hours away from the governor's pick to turn around the St. Louis Circuit Attorney's Office. Tonight, the front runners to replace Kim Gardner. They all care about the city of St. Louis. This is not going to be a glamorous job. The official announcement is coming exactly 13 hours from now. Good evening, I'm Mike Bush, and Allred has the night off. Within the last two hours, we learned one of the three finalists, Judge Michael Noble, is no longer being considered. Five on your side's Brent Solomon is following the latest developments. He joins us live outside the circuit attorney's office. Brent. Well, this is where the governor will make his announcement at 11 tomorrow morning on who will replace Kim Gardner. And tonight, we're told it's between two people. One, a current judge who's held a position like this in the past, and a local law firm partner who serves on the State University Board of Governors. 52-year-old Marcel Jones cares about this city and how criminal cases are handled. I'm a victim of the criminal justice system. I was falsely accused. Um, in, in my neighborhood, we call that free case. Arrested and charged in an assault and burglary case he says he never committed. After putting up time and money to fight it, he says the charges were dismissed. He was hopeful for Kim Garner's administration. She was trying her best to help the problem. And at some point, I think she possibly got overwhelmed. Now Five on Your Side is learning the two top finalists who could replace her when the governor announces his decision Friday morning. Paula P. Bryant, a circuit judge appointed in 2016, is a SLU law grad and once served as a prosecutor. Some activists who supported Gardner in the past want her. The other contender, Gabe Gore, an attorney who focuses on complex civil cases and white-collar defense. He's a founding board member of KIPP, St. Louis Public Charter Schools. First of all, they've got to hire people. You've got to get people in the office. And hopefully people who are dedicated to the job and have experience. And there's no time to waste. To get someone in there who can determine how to get those cases out to trial, the old cases that have been languishing for all of this time. For this voter, he just wants someone who cares. Common sense is with common experience. So you've experienced some of my pain, you've experienced some of the things the community have dealt with, then you'll be able to adjust and, and appropriately make changes. Because the empathy part of this is, in, in my opinion, the most important part of the criminal justice system. Now keep in mind that the person who is appointed tomorrow will only be in this role temporarily. That person will replace the current interim circuit attorney, Evan Rodriguez. But voters will have the final say next year when there's an election. And part of that say could be deciding whether they want Gardner back. Mike. Brent, thanks. Tonight, thousands of cases remain in limbo, leaving victims and their families waiting for justice. Quinton Roberts' murder trial is set to begin on Monday. He's accused of killing 25-year-old Isaiah Danforth last January. Danforth's mother says the prosecutor in charge of the case resigned last month, and she has not heard from the circuit attorney's office. I feel like you didn't think about us, you know, as the family is concerned, because what do we do now? You know, not only are we dealing with the death of our loved ones and how the case is actually going to go, now we have to sit and worry about who's going to take over our case now. Danfort said she's hoping these changes will restore the situation and give more structure. Just hours ago, the Missouri State Auditor announced he's moving forward with an audit of the St. Louis Circuit Attorney's Office despite Gardner's resignation. Scott Fitzpatrick says Gardner has stood in the way of an audit by refusing to produce basic financial documents. In a statement, Fitzpatrick says, quote, one way or another, Kim Gardner will have to answer for her time as Circuit Attorney. 
Her sudden resignation doesn't negate the duty of my office to make sure the St. Louis Circuit Attorney's Office is transparent and accountable. The audit, which originally began two years ago, is expected to wrap up later this year. Well, a beautiful night at the ballpark, but some weather changes are coming. Weather First Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell is tracking our chances of Friday storms. You know, we're going to get some rain around here, Mike. There's no doubt about that tomorrow, but it's not going to be an awful lot of rain. And for most of us, we probably don't get much in the way of thunder either. A couple of rumbles, but the better chance for storms looks to be farther south of St. Louis. It is a quiet night. You're looking out into St. Charles right now. Temperatures dropping back into the upper 60s and lower 70s. The active weather that's all to our north and west, that front right now, starting to make inroads across Iowa into Nebraska. A few scattered showers have made it into far northwest Missouri, but they're pretty wimpy as showers go, and that's pretty much what we're going to get for the next 12 hours. Everything's kind of focused along that front well to our north and west. We'll see partly cloudy skies. We still have that high level smoke hanging around and behind this front. We've actually seen the air quality go down north of Omaha and even now into the Omaha area. We think tomorrow there is a chance after this front goes through about this time tomorrow night for an hour or two where the air quality may be a little iffy, but it doesn't stick around. So the high level smoke's still there. Cold fronts all the way for tomorrow and then those afternoon showers are likely a dry weekend, but some changes temperature wise. See you in a few minutes, Mike, to talk more about that. All right, Scott, a St. Charles mother is charged tonight in the death of her two year old son. 30 year old Deja Slaughter is charged with child endangerment and neglect. According to court documents, Slaughter admitted to striking the child in the face with her hand and a tennis shoe. She told investigators he became fussy when she couldn't find a piece to his feeding tube. Tonight, Ferguson police are looking for two men who got into a gun battle in the parking lot of a Home Depot store. It happened this morning outside the store on Newhall's Ferry. Witnesses say two men were firing shots at each other, then ran off in different directions. It does not appear anyone was shot. Investigators say no cars and the building, neither the cars nor the building were hit by bullets. Developing tonight, a man in his 70s is in the hospital after a road rage incident at a Chesterfield grocery store. Police say it happened last night in the parking lot of the Deerbergs at Olive Boulevard and Woods Mill Road. Our Robert Townsend is there now live with the latest. Robert. Mike, tonight police have not released any new information. They tell us the man suffered serious injuries right here in this parking lot. It's left many shoppers and employees at this West St. Louis County strip mall saddened. I don't understand why people get so mad and want to fight with each other and hurt each other. I'm surprised that somebody would go so far. Others in disbelief. And so it's scary and it's the kind of thing that you hate to see happen. Police say what began as a fender bender quickly escalated into a fight in this Deerberg's parking lot Wednesday night. Paramedics took a man in his 70s to a hospital with serious injuries. The other driver stayed at the scene. This serves as a cautionary tale of how quickly these sorts of incidents can escalate into something far more serious. Simply don't engage the other person. Call the police when safe to do so. I'm saddened, but not surprised. Webster University professor Mathoni Musingali says that's because since 2013, road rage incidents, shootings, and other forms of violence have been on the rise nationwide. Why? A lack of coping skills, which leads to an inability to regulate oneself, to regulate your emotions. So when you're in that state, you're not thinking straight. Her best advice, walk away. It's the right thing to do. And it's really not hard to do. Meanwhile, shoppers hope the injured driver recovers. And I hope he doesn't doesn't have any long lasting illnesses. Now, police tell us they collected evidence from the scene. I talked to the injured driver's daughter, and she tells me right now they just want to be left alone. Live in Chesterfield, Robert Townsend, five on your side. The man accused of killing Cash App founder and St. Louis native Bob Lee has pleaded not guilty to first degree murder charges. After several delays, Nima Momeni was finally arraigned in a San Francisco courtroom today. A judge denied him bond. 
Lee was stabbed multiple times back on April 4th and later died during surgery. Investigators say the two men were arguing over Momeni's sister at the time. Tonight, a Wentzville contractor accused of scamming dozens of customers out of thousands of dollars is in police custody. Craig Sutton, the owner of Tri-County Fence and Deck, is charged with 22 felonies. Those charges include stealing, deceptive business practices, and financial exploitation of the elderly. The Better Business Bureau says it received numerous complaints from consumers last year who reported losses totaling more than $125,000. Tonight, Hyundai and Kia are agreeing to pay out $200 million over skyrocketing car thefts. It's all part of a class action settlement over claims their vehicles are too easy to steal because they lack the basic anti-theft features. More than 9 million car owners could benefit. Both automakers have developed software patches to try and correct the problem. St. Louis has a rich aviation history, and tonight six students from the Ferguson Florissant School District became part of its future. A takeoff ceremony was held tonight for the Red Tail Cadet Training Program at Spirit of St. Louis Airport in Chesterfield. It's a six-week immersive flight training course. But it's more than just being pilot. It's good citizens, uh, well-read, articulate, um, pouring back in community, but, but ultimately uh, take on aviation as a career. After tonight's ceremony, the students took off in their first test flight.